what's more risky for you? Waiting to test and see what happens and hope and pray that those buyers don't come back to the market or what's more risky, like maybe we find a home that's here, right? So you stop throwing 100% equity away or getting a home today. And I get it, like it's a hard decision to make, but I guess what would have a bigger negative ramification for your lifestyle? Throwing the money away and then having to compete again when the prices are gonna be higher because the rates are lower and there's more buyers or different perspective, get a home today. It might not be exactly what you want, you know, that is just what it is, right? Because because you guys didn't buy a couple years ago, right? You weren't able to. Get in today. If rates come down and prices go up, you might even be able to sell this home, pull out all of that equity, right? Maybe 10, 15, 20% in equity in the next couple of years, pull out that equity and then go buy your future home or, right? Or you could even stay in the home you're at, refinance it, your payment drops and you still have all that equity where you could pay off debt or you could you know, maybe do an addition to the home. So now the home's exactly what you want in the neighborhood that you want. All right, let's do this. Um, I want to talk about the objection that we get that's really, really powerful right now, um, the handler, because right now um, a lot of you guys are coming to me with the objection around um, we want to wait and see what happens with interest rates. And the first thing that we have to remember is that we're not objection handlers, right? We're not trying to handle the objection. We're trying to understand what they mean. So there's a couple of things we need to do. So when they give you that objection of, hey, we want to wait for interest rates. Hey, we want to see what happens in the marketplace. We have to help them understand that that may or may not be the right decision. All right. And the way we do that is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no worries. Um, would you be okay if I asked a couple of questions about, you know, or maybe possibly even give you a different perspective? Yeah, yeah, no worries. Okay, cool. So when when you say like you're waiting for interest rates to come down, I guess like, how do you mean by that? Well, you know, rates are, are high. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I know what the media says and I know what that means to other clients, but I want to know what that means to you because I'm like, well, you know what, you, you know, you know, like the rates are high. Right. But what does that mean for you guys? Well, it just means that like we can't afford the home that we actually want to buy. Okay. So because the rates are here and the house you want to buy is also here, now your affordabilities come down a little bit. Yeah. Okay. And I guess like walk me through, right? Like I guess walk me through because we're renting right now, right? Yeah. So can I give you maybe a slightly different perspective? Sure. So your rent is what? Okay. You're paying 3,500. Okay. And let's say rates stay at where they're at for like the next 18 to 24 months, right? Yeah. Do you have a calculator handy? Make them get their phone out. Yeah. What's up? Could you take 3,500 times 18? Sure. Okay. What's that number? Uh, $50,000. I don't know what that number is, but let's just call it $50,000. Okay. And now just so that I better understand this, this $50,000 that you're paying to your landlord are they giving you like any credits when you like when you guys leave? Like, are are they going to help you like use some of that money? Are they going to give you like ten thousand dollars to use for your down payment? Well, well, no. Oh, okay. So then this fifty k right is actually like a hundred percent interest. Well, yeah, I guess it is. Okay, and then just like walk me through, and you you, you that like, you see how we don't let them say but. Okay. Cause so, so let's walk me through then, I guess like where, like, you know, I, I understand rates are high, inventory's low, affordability is a challenge for a lot of people, but walk me through like, why didn't you buy a home maybe a year or two ago when the market was like super competitive and crazy? Well, we tried to buy a home, but, um, we, you know, the agent we chose wasn't able to win the offers. Oh, okay. And then we got kind of tired of writing offers and losing. Like it's a lot of work, a lot of emotions, right? That makes sense. So what prevented you guys from buying a home then? Well, we just got tired of dealing with the competition. Okay. And then what happened like over the last 12 months where you didn't buy a home? Well, over the last 12 months, we thought maybe the rates would come down or maybe prices would come down to a place where we'd be more comfortable. Right. Okay. That, okay. And then like, I guess, 
just walk me through, like if there's, if rates come down, right, would you say that there's other buyers in the marketplace that are like you that didn't buy a home, they couldn't buy a home, they got outbid, they didn't want to compete at those price points, and they're still waiting just like you guys for prices or rates to come down? Yeah, that that makes sense. Okay. And so like what happens if those people, right? Like if like let's just say there's a hundred people in your price point. What happens to those hundred people that didn't buy a home a couple of years ago because they didn't want to continue to compete? Plus the people that have been saving money for the last two or three years, right? Maybe they had some gifts from their parents, maybe some stocks cashed out, right? What happens to those people that are now ready to buy as well? Does the pool get bigger or smaller? Well, I guess the pool gets bigger. Okay. And so if the pool gets bigger, right, and we're not building houses, right? Like builders stop building houses. So if the if the builders aren't building houses and there's still kind of like a inventory crunch, but now we have a bigger pool of people, if the rates come down to like, let's say 5% where you would feel comfortable buying, Right. And I'm sure at 6%, some of these people will buy, but a lot of them are probably just like you waiting to get to that four, five, six percent range. So if the rates come down to that 5% where you want them to be and inventory stays the same, do you think we're going to have more buyers, right? Hand up more buyers or less buyers? Well, I guess we'd have more buyers. Oh, okay. So we'd have more buyers, right? You see the hands? Okay. And then walk me through, like if there's more buyers, less inventory or the same amount of, maybe even there's a little bit more inventory, but not crazy more. Do you think we're going to have more competition or less competition in the marketplace? Well, we'll probably have more competition, right? That makes sense that we would have more competition, right? Like a little skeptical. Yeah. That makes sense that we'd have actually more competition. So if we have more competition, more buyers, what do you think is going to happen to prices? Are they going to go down or are they going to go up, right? Like just basic supply and demand, right? Oh, they're going to go up. Okay. And then if they go up and there's more buyers because everybody's trying to lock in that 5% rate, do you think we could see that super competitive market come back? Oh, we could. Okay. So I guess like, do you like, I guess like what's more risky for you waiting again to test and see what happens and hope and pray that those buyers don't come back to the market when everybody's back on the market, right? It's, or what's more risky, like maybe finding a home now that's, you know, I know you want to be here, but maybe we find a home that's here, right? So you stop throwing a hundred percent equity away, right? Our hundred percent interest to your landlord. Remember, I think we said that was like $50,000, right? You show them the paper again, you're writing on. I think you said that was $50,000 we're just going to throw away or getting a home today, right? Locking it in. I know it. And, and I get it. Like it, it's, it's a hard decision to make, but I guess what's, what would have a bigger, like ram, like negative ramification for your lifestyle, throwing the money away and then having to compete again when the prices are going to be higher because the rates are lower and there's more buyers or right. Or a different perspective is you get a home today. It might not be exactly what you want. And I, that's, you know, that is just what it is, right? Because, because you guys didn't buy a couple of years ago, right? You weren't able to get in today, right? If rates come down and prices go up, you might even be able to sell this home, pull out all of that equity, right? Maybe 10, 15, 20% in equity in the next couple of years, pull out that equity and then go buy your future home or right? Or you could even stay in the home you're at, refinance it, your payment drops, and you still have all that equity where you could pay off debt or you could you know, maybe do an addition to the home. So now the home's exactly what you want in the neighborhood that you want. And you have all that equity, right? But it's also your home. Like you don't have a landlord telling you what to do for the next 24 to 36 months. I guess, I guess like what would be more risky staying here and praying and hoping that the market shifts in your advantage and nobody else jumps in or being one of those people that takes action today to put their family in the best position possible financially, security, education wise, I guess what, what, what would be more risky? Okay. So where should we go from here? 
you see how it's a different way to handle the objection. Instead of telling them that the rates are, oh my God, they don't care about the rates. It's maybe work 10% of the time. Now we actually have an opportunity to win the deal. Now you actually have an opportunity to help these people out. Now you are the trusted advisor.